Hello, I'm Philip Wade. So, you want to learn to program PLCs? Don't know where to start? Just want to get some information at this time to try and say, okay, is this really what I want to do? Is it that difficult? Is it that expensive? Well, I can answer all those questions for you very quickly with a click PLC from Automation Direct. This is the first video in a series of videos to teach PLC programming uh, and for that, I'm using the uh, Click series of PLCs from Automation Direct for several reasons. One is they're very inexpensive. So the capital cost to, to get started to learn how to do it is very, very low. The uh, software is free on a download and um, the technical support is free. So with those things in mind, it's a good place to start with this. Oh, did I leave out? This is a very powerful CPU. Now, I believe in the KISS method, and that means keep it simple, stupid. Everything I want to do in this course is to keep it simple, to make it easy to understand. And I also believe in the hands-on method. I believe if you want to follow this course, you'll need to get you a CPU from Automation Direct. You'll also need a power supply. So this is one I'm just going to click on here. This one is um, an Automation Direct power supply for the Click series. Now they make two PLC power supplies. This one is only a, about a $30 unit. It's a half amp supply. They make the, another one that's about $45 and it's uh, 1.3 amps. Now for what I'm doing in the class on this, probably this half amp supply will be sufficient for everything, counting the push buttons, the proximity sensors, and the, the inputs and outputs that we use on this. If not, then I can step up later if I want to, to a, a larger power supply. Or, if I wanted to, I could use a different standalone power supply that's not actually physically connected. The physical connecting to this just means that it's easy to and close to use. It makes a small footprint. The wires that you'll run for the 24 volt supply will run from here to the little connector here on the bottom of the PLC unit. It brings, you use a 110, uh, well, it may be up to a 120, I think. Um, yes. You can use 100, of 100 volts to 240 uh, volts AC connections in. Now your connection should always have a ground on it. So for that, you can just use an extension cord with a receptacle end cut off if you need to, just to be able to power up this, plug it into the wall. And then of course, you're depending upon the circuit breaker in the wall that goes to the uh, receptacle. Uh, I prefer actually to use something like this. This is uh, an appliance cord, just like an extension cord. The only difference is it has a switch in the middle of it so you can turn on and off your appliance. It has three conductors on there, which you'll need, the black the, uh, for the hot, the neutral, and the green for the ground. Oh, you'll also need the programming cable. You have to be able to get your program from the PLC into the CPU. This is the um, programming cable that's used for the Click PLCs and, and for other product, uh, products too. It runs about uh, $45. It plugs into the uh, top port. That's the RS-232 port on the CPU. The other end just plugs into the USB port on your computer. Now this is considered a micro brick. They call it a brick because the physical shape. And that's an industry standard term for this type of PLC, a small PLC that has fixed inputs and outputs already on it. This one has an RS-232 port for the, typically the programming port. It has a second RS-232 port for connecting to another device, such as an HMI, a display panel, a touch screen. Um, it also has another port, an RS-485 port, which uh, runs the Modbus protocol which can connect up to another, I think, 62 other devices, which can be uh, AC drives, they can be um, other PLCs, they can be a radio communications from one PLC to another, it can be a hardwire connection for a string of different uh, pro uh, uh, products. So, it's very, very powerful. Now then, this one only has four discrete inputs, 24 volt inputs, four relay outputs, which can be anything from, I think, about 5 volts um, DC up to uh, 200 volts or so uh, AC for the output. I'll have to check the specs and see what the voltage range on, uh, that you can put on those is. It has two analog inputs. 
that uh, allow you to be able to read uh, temperatures, uh, positions, um, um, speeds, whatever. And it has two uh, analog outputs, which can be used to maybe tell a, a motor control how fast you want it to run. They can have, you know, maybe use a, a one of the outputs from the from the from there to tell this. Do you want it to run at 47% speed? All right, it'll have a zero to five or zero to 10 volt signal coming back from it that can come back into to this, tell it, yes, I am at speed. So for example, if it wasn't at speed, you, the, from the display or from some other device, you can tell it to, to increase or decrease the speed to set the speed where you want. These are stackable. This little port here on the side is actually the communication bus. You can have as many as eight more modules on the side of this connected in, each one communicating back to the CPU here. That would give you those other modules, input and output modules, um, relay modules, uh, analog modules, so forth. You could have as many as 150 inputs and outputs on this one little device. Now, like I said, this one is, is a little, it's not the bottom of the line. It's about $150. The price range on the least expensive goes from about $70 up to about $200. Um, the ones with the Ethernet connections on there also do uh, high speed uh, counting. But really, if uh, you really need something that's not high speed, but you know, you know, 100 times a second or something like that, you can actually do that with this probably because the inputs are so fast and they read so fast and the CPU processing time is so fast. These are things that we'll get into as we begin to look at uh, how to program, different tricks about programming, different limitations that you might have uh, in the application that you're doing. So with that said, I guess it's time that we went to Automation Direct's website and began to download the software so that we could see how quick and easy it'll download on your system and you'll be ready to start programming. All right, let's go to the internet. We'll go to Automation Direct's homepage, and we'll wait my my super slow internet connection, which is Hughes Net Gen 5, not quite as fast as what they advertise. This is Automation Direct's homepage. We will scroll down now to Programmable Controllers. That's where you'll find the PLCs, Programmable Logic Controllers. Okay, here are the different uh, series from Automation Direct. You have the products, excuse me, the productivity series, which is the most powerful, uh, most uh, versatile. Then there's also the -more, uh, do more series, the direct logic series, and now we have the the click series PLC with the stack, stackable micro brick, and then there's another one, the open source controllers, which is a different animal. We're interested in the click PLCs, so I will click on the clicks. Okay, here you see the PLC CPU units, and there's, I don't know, 20 or 25 of them total. Um, they say that it's a stackable a micro brick. They call it a brick because that's the uh, shape, and it's a, a common term or common name uh, in the industry for this type of PLC that has uh, already has some fixed I.O. on it. Um, then <clears throat> it's stackable because these are the additional modules that you can add on to it. I click right onto the side of it and it extends out up to eight modules. So you can stack on more modules to get more inputs and output uh, capabilities. Uh, and then there's also the power supplies. You will need a power supply. These are 24 volt DC power supplies. Now you can see there's only two to choose from. For our training, uh, I'll just be using the, this uh, $31 module. Uh, it's a half amp. Uh, these two modules, um, they click, clip, or stack, snap right onto the side of the CPU. Um, you don't have to use uh, this particular type. It can be, you know, anybody's 24 volt DC uh, supply. The $31 one is a half amp, and that's more than what we need for the stuff that we'll be doing right now. Uh, if you wanted to, you could get the 1.3 amp, uh, which is a lot more powerful. Uh, and it's right now the current price is $42.50, but you will need one of these uh, to complete the training. The PLC units, the CPUs themselves. 
Okay, here we go. They're priced from lowest to highest, basically. Uh, basically it also means they're the uh, least amount of, uh, of uh, bells and whistles, I guess, to the most bells and whistles. But you see the cheapest one is $69, which to me for a PLC is just absolutely unbelievable price. Absolutely unbelievable. All right, so we'll go on down, scroll down to the bottom, however far this takes us. Let's see. Well, there's more coming up. All right, we're down to the, to the bottom. No, we're not. Here we are. We're down to the bottom. $203 for the one with the most bells and whistles. Now, this one is uh, Ethernet with analog inputs and outputs. It has the two serial ports. It also has an RJ45, uh, uh, excuse me, it has one serial port, one Ethernet port, and uh, one RJ45. Uh, 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 RS-485 port. <clears throat> it has uh, relay outputs, <clears throat> discrete inputs. Um, and this one, because it's got all the bells and whistles, it's got the high-speed counters and, and all everything that you can do with the software is included in this one. You won't need this one for the class, but I don't have a problem with you getting this one. It will do everything we're going to do plus more. I believe the one we want is about $150. Let's go down to that group there. It's not Ethernet. Uh, let's see the Ethernet. Ethernet. Here we go. Uh, click analog. Uh, serial ports. It's got the RJ485, uh, RS-485 port on there. It's got analog inputs, um, discrete inputs, analog outputs, discrete outputs, and uh, relay outputs. This is the one that I'll be using uh, in the class to begin with. <coughs> This is uh, just to show you where they are in the in the uh, in the scope of things here. When you go to Automation Direct website, the real reason we came here was just to show you a little bit about where the PLCs are, the little bit of the differences in the PLC series that they have. But really, the most important was to go to support, then go to downloads, so that we can download the free software. Here we go. And we're looking at the Click software. Now you see they have the Seymour series, the uh, the Seymours, uh, which is Seymours are the uh, different type of uh, displays. So <clears throat> later on we'll be using some uh, Seymour display to show um, data collection, what you can and can't do, you know, how you connect to the PLC with uh, the display unit, the, the operator interface, the touch screens, and so forth. So we're going to click on the Click. That's the software we want. We will click on download and I'll put in a, an email address here. Confirm it. Um, I'm not going to subscribe at this time and I'm going to click on the download. Okay. Now it's asking me where to put it. I'm going to let it go to my downloads folder on my computer and save. Now on the lower left hand corner here, you can see that the file we're downloading is only 94.4 megabytes. This is the most current uh, software. It's the 2.60 right here. Uh, if the release date was February 12, 2020, <clears throat> which was uh, almost a year ago. Now, my internet's kind of slow, so we'll just speed up this part until it's complete. All right, let's go to the downloads. Uh, there it is, the Click Software version 2.6. Oh, should have backed off of that a little bit. Back to downloads. I want to extract all of it. <clears throat> there, we have a CD image. And uh, I'm going to click the install, uh, the install application. But there's also the Koyo USB serial driver. Um, if it doesn't ask you for the install of that, make sure you do install the driver. When you get the um, programming cable, you'll need this driver to, uh, to link to the PLC itself. I'm going to click the install. I probably already have the driver on my computer, so yes, allow it. All right, now then you have the install software or install guide. I'm just going to install the software. This is so much easier and faster than the big boys, the Alan, uh, uh, the, uh, um, Alan Bradley's 
Siemens, Modicons, those are so much slower than what this is. Next. Okay. I accept the license agreement. Next. Wait, and we'll put the company here is BBBBB. So you have to have something in this line. Next. And um, I'll take the default location for the install. Next. Everything looks good to me. Do the install. Next, create an icon. Yes. And that's it. Do believe. Finish. There we go. Here's the icon. Let's open the software up. Did I double click? Maybe I didn't. Yes, I did. I guess it takes a little bit slower on the first time it has to open up. Here in this picture, you can see some of the modules added onto the CPU itself. All right. The first thing it does is it asks you if this is a, you want to start a new project, open an existing project, or connect to a PLC. At this time, we don't have a PLC to connect to. We don't have any existing projects. So we would start a new project and click close. Now, at this time, it wants us to select um, a PLC. Now, the picture over here on the right-hand side uh, it shows you exactly whichever one that you selected. It updates, you see, as I change to a different uh, different ones. This one I can see has uh, an Ethernet port, an RS-232 port, uh, and then inputs and outputs. Let's go to something different here. Um, something without Ethernet, for example. I guess all the E's are the Ethernets. This is the one I think we'll be using for the class. <clears throat> it's got uh, analog uh, inputs and uh, outputs. It has uh, discrete inputs and it has uh, relay outputs. It has uh, four inputs, DC, outputs. It has four that are relay. Uh, it has RS-485. And Da, 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 da. And then the two analog um, and two analog out and two analog in. Okay, so we'll select that one. Now then, I can take it to full uh, full screen. So now you see this is what the opening screen looks like. Over here on the right hand side are your um, commands that you have. The select what type of contacts you have for the contacts. Uh, what type of coils for outputs, um, what timers, counters, advanced, which is math and drum uh, shift registers, and then um, <clears throat> copy and uh, search, and then call for jumping to subroutines, for next uh, statements, they'll do loops, communications, send and receive. So at this time, that's all I want to show, just to make sure you know how to open the software. The next video will go into actually connecting to a PLC, setting up um, the addresses and so forth. Thank you very much.